outside today. I felt nice outside today. I thought, well, maybe we should have church outside, but I thought, well, then somebody feed you cold. <laughs> it was a little chilly when I took the dog out this morning. So, uh, just kind of looking ahead at some things. Uh, the, the church council is actually going to meet. We have, uh, I have on here the 21st. We're actually going to meet on the 7th, the first Wednesday of October. We will be in the uh, fellowship hall, but we need to set the budget for next year. And we will need to have a congregational meeting on November 1st, or the first week of November, which I don't know what that day is exactly. But uh, we can handle that by, we'll just put somebody downstairs to count those. All we have to do for that meeting is approve the budget and elect our church council. So I think that can be done pretty quickly and pretty easily in the setup that we've got. So we're in pretty good shape. Hey, that's, uh, I meant to do something here. Let me adjust something here. It's, it's nothing. Adjusting's not going to do any good because the fan was just on. It was really stuffy when I walked in this morning, so I flipped the fan on to let it pull some air from the basement up and down. So to keep it a little fresher, okay? Uh, so that's the, so thanks, Nick, for trying, but it, it wasn't going to do any good. <laughs> so I forgot to turn that off. Um, in talking with most of the people, with Jilly and Sue, and we had talked back and forth about doing this and doing that, but Renee told me this morning we had an additional $900 come in, so we were well over uh, $6,000 some odd dollars in donations. We're thinking maybe we just pour out of the chili and stew this year and just say we're not and we're not going to do it. Uh, we're going to concentrate our efforts on uh, the ham and bean there. Although the ideas we had for chili and stew will transfer to ham and beans, and maybe in four months we will have a little or towards the end of the winter, or in, at least in February, we'll have a little bit of a better idea of where things are going with this. I know one of Pam's doctors said he was he thought we would have a better idea once we got through the new year and uh, kind of through the cold weather and when people had to start going back inside for things. So I think that's what we're going to do. And also part of me really hates to go back and send letters to people asking for donations again when they've been so generous already. Uh, so last year we did really well with our ham and beans and our factory ran out. <laughs> and we sent people free slaw, cornbread, and desserts because we were out of ham and beans. So uh, I think for this year we'll, we'll try that. Also, uh, and, just, and this was all done by chat, text because I had to have a uh, quick decision on this, but the church council decided we would not be taking part in the country church Christmas tour this year. Um, they are having it. There are still 20 some odd churches that are still going to be part of that. Um, honestly, in my mind, that had nothing to do with worshiping God. It had nothing to do with, that was just a open up and let people walk in. And that was like, I don't know. Um, this may sound unchristian and I don't mean it to, but I'd rather keep things safe for our congregation and people that want to visit our congregation for our worship rather than just open it up for somebody to reach Christmas decorations. <clears throat> so we'll go back to it the following year if we need if we want. But uh, Pleasant Hill had already pulled off because they just don't have the volunteers anymore. Uh, that congregate, what was left of that congregation is getting much older, and they just don't have the volunteers to do it, and so they had already said they weren't. We were the last two on the, the this end, so I don't know how many we would have really had anyway, to be honest. Uh, a lot of people hit those two on their way up or their way back, so, but we didn't make a decision. We, but the good news is, we're going to decorate for Christmas just like we always do, okay? We may have to do it a little bit differently. But we're going to decorate because we need that beauty and we need that normalcy in our lives. I'm going to tell you one thing. I have a cold here. And that is, and it would require everyone to wear a mask. But for Christmas Eve services, for everybody to be in the sanctuary, uh, so we can do our candlelight service. But if it was asking, I'm just asking for that night to just everybody please wear a mask that night. Or depending where we're at by that point. But I think at some point we need to be unified during that Christmas season for this good of it, if nothing else. So... Anything else that I've forgotten? I haven't done birthdays. Gotta remember what I mean. This week. Uh, Rock Nanny has a birthday tomorrow. Some of you wouldn't remember Rock, but Rock was bad. I was confirmed here. And uh, his sister works, one sister works at Hobby Lobby, the other one's married to a doctor at Wash U, and then, no? Kansas City. 
in Kansas City. And Brock lives in Kansas City and is, or St. Louis, he's the head of like the cybersecurity from Montgomery Bank. <laughs> so oh. those of you that remember Brock, uh, that was a, I will never forget Brock and Drew Hinkle coming as Napoleon Dynamite to our Halloween party. For those of you who know who Napoleon Dynamite is, but they both had red hair and freckles, so it was the perfect look. Um, but that, uh, Heather Bruni has a birthday this week. Ron and Jeannie Lowen have an anniversary, and Travis Clifton and Jana have a, uh, Jana and Travis Clifton have a anniversary this week. Uh, next week is what, the fourth? So Peggy Borkfield and Tammy Mueller will have birthdays on October 3rd. So I don't know if anybody is here to sing to. We just, we may have two special music this morning, so we'll just skip the birthday. Okay. Anybody else have anything that needs to be announced? All right. Join me in the call to worship, please. This is uh, adapted from Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and be good. So we will live in the land and enjoy the security. Take delight in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. We will trust in God, and He will act, making our lives shine like the noonday sun. Bow your heads, please. Omnipotent God, who has ruled throughout the ages, we come humbly to your mountaintop to offer our worship and to hear a word from you. Help us this day to resolve to keep your commandments. Help us to follow in your way. Guide our steps and draw near to us in this time of worship that all may know who you are, our God, and we are your people. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Join me in Immortal and Visible. <laughs>
I'm just gonna head straight. I've got children's sermons today. Mm-hmm. What have we got? <laughs> so I grabbed this book that was lying over there, and it's called the I Am Development. And the the ribbon was in here, and I opened it up to the ribbon in this spot, and it's called Blessed Are the Peacemakers. Well, that kind of fits exactly in what we've been talking about. <laughs> Uh, and on the top, one of the interesting things is, is, is the names of God is really what it is. A hundred devotions about the names of God, and this is the Lord is peace, or that translates in Hebrew to Jehovah Shalom. <laughs> and we've talked about Shalom, the idea of peace. So, uh, it tells a story about a little ten-year-old girl in 1982, and some of you may remember this. Uh, her name was Samantha Smith. She wrote a letter to a new lead, the new leader of the Soviet Union, the governor of Sorry, I knew my historian there would get me corrected. Uh, and she asked him what he was going to do to keep from having a war. Now, if you remember in 1982, we were in the midst of the, the height of the Cold War there. Uh, a few months later, she got a letter back with an invitation to visit Russia and to bring her family along. And the family went and they saw uh, the net with uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and uh, he gave her a tour of the whole bit. And she was uh, touted as the the United States' youngest peace ambassador, just for writing a simple letter. Uh, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called to be children of God. I was just kind of thinking, you know, what, what kind of things can we do for peace? Uh, what can we do sometimes? I can tell you one. What, Bernina? Um, try to stay positive. Try to, try to stay try positive. Try to in what you think. Uh, yes. And have faith in her. And, and, and I was thinking of a, a, an old lesson about... Uh, listen twice before speaking once, where God gave us two ears and one mouth, sometimes we need to do what? Keep our mouth shut. Uh, especially lately, there's been a lot of times when I've stood and went, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's hard trying to be a peacemaker right now. It's just hard. And uh, all of us do it in our own special ways, but it's, it's just hard. So Keep that in mind this week. We get ready for our uh, prayer time this morning. A couple people I want to mention. Uh, one, as many of you are aware, Sherry Corney, a member here, passed away uh, early Friday morning. Uh, her visitation is today at uh, from 3 to 6 at McCombs, and the funeral is tomorrow at 10. She will be buried in our cemetery, and then there will be a meal downstairs. And uh, Sherry Sander is helping, or is basically coordinating the whole thing. Uh, and then it we will clean after church today, and then we will clean after the meal again. But we should be fine because it'll be Monday to Sunday before we have a, uh, another gathering here. But uh, that uh, her maiden name was Spooler, so if you're familiar with the Spoolers in Jackson, it's a pretty large family. Uh, but uh, I'll be conducting a funeral tomorrow morning at 10. Uh, so just uh, prayers for her family, please, uh, as they continue to deal with that. Things went pretty wrong pretty fast before sharing went in for some surgery and came out with a, just a very short time to live. So, uh, I know it's been very hard. Keep Cherry Sander in your prayers too, because Cherry was her dear friend and was with her uh, quite a bit there. Uh, this one's a little bit happier. Anna Marie and Paul have another great grandchild. Uh, Ashley and uh, Evan Henry uh, have a little boy. Sydney. 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 Yep. Evan and Sydney. If I got it in the right order, I would probably got it. Evan and Sydney Henry. I uh, have a boy, Brooks William, I believe is his name. Yes, and he was born Friday morning? Thursday, Thursday morning. So, um, some of you know Evan, and if not, you know maybe some of the Henry family or some of the Gerbers. Uh, Brenda Gerber uh, is Evan's mom. Anybody else have anybody they need to mention? I'm having my second Cadillac surgery on Thursday. You're having your second one on Thursday? Yeah, I hope you have as good a result as that one that I did the first one. I hope you do too. That went really, really well for you. So, uh, Lisa's doing okay. We all but Doug need some prayers. He's having some back issues. Okay. Well, he was out last week from work. Oh, okay. Backs are <laughs> difficult things. They, uh, I don't have the issue often, but occasionally, and, and you just the, the worst part is, is you just can't get comfortable. No matter what you do, you can't get comfortable. And I will tell you something, Jeff. <laughs> You'd have to make them stand up, but if you get up and take that cushion off that pew, it would sit a lot better on your back. <clears throat> those of us standing up straight, so that's what. Well, those pews are built with a curve in them for your back, and when they put the cushion in, it 
raised you above the curve. So if you ever want to try it, and I, I dare you to try it, raise the cushion up and sit down on the pew. It may be hard, but it feels better on your back. Anybody else ever done that? <laughs> the genie remembers it just you. <laughs> it, it threw the curve off on you. So uh, try, that try that next Sunday. That'd be just fine. But yeah, it does. It is. It is different. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. We have a student that takes this and passed away on Monday. Yes. If you could please remember our faculty and our kids because they're really hurting right now. Yep. Cape Central had a, a student pass away. Uh, I can't remember the name right now, but uh, uh, that's that's tough on a school. Hunter Keeper. Hunter Keeper. Thank you. Uh, that's tough on a school system when you have that uh, stand shaking his head. He's been there. It's, it's very, very hard uh, to lose a, a student, uh, especially a young student. So please keep that family in your prayers. Lucas. We ran at St. John Tuesday. You ran at St. John Tuesday? Did you do okay? Girls and boys took first. Girls and boys took first? Eighth grade? And seventh grade. That's good. Okay. okay, both did? Okay. But you're eighth grade, right? That's what I thought. Okay. Anybody else? I could have gotten prayers. Father, we come to you this morning on a cloudy day, on a day that kind of makes us a little bit lazy, a little bit blah. Sunshine is so important to us, and we forget how important that sunshine is. In just a few weeks, we're going to lose some of that sunshine as the days start getting shorter, and we move into the wintertime, the time when life seems so far away sometimes. Father, we know that you were there last in life that you are always there with us and all we have to do is think positively and look for you and we will overcome. And we know that whatever trials we're going through in this world, no matter how bad it seems, that you are with us, that you are our rock and our salvation, you're our guiding strength and that you have us sheltered in your arms. We may want things changed, but we may not understand the plan. We may not know what's good for us at this point may have to point it out to us that we trust in you. And we pray that you'll continue to allow us the faith to trust in you. Father, we come asking for those that are in need of prayers, whether it just be smaller issues or it be large issues, whether it be good uh, sympathies or whether it be sorrow, we pray that you'll be with all this week as they go through trials and tribulations. We know that often those things bring us down and create cycles. And when we get in those cycles, it's so much easier to sin. And we know that sin is the, the price that we have to pay sometimes. But we know that you paid our debt and that you went to the cross so that we could die. You, you would die and cover our sins. Father, we pray that you'll continue to be with us. You'll use this church. You'll uphold us. You'll give us peace. All this we ask in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You would mean with me. I almost said stand, but you don't have to. Sing with me, God of grace and God of glory. I think you'll recognize this tune. What do you think, Carol? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs>
back in, or to, to get out of your old habits, I wanted to say, please be seated there, but uh, you aren't saying that, so I'm going to be seated. Uh, we're continuing on with the Peace Wednesday, <coughs> and uh, today is Peace and Following, and that is uh, sometimes, it's kind of appropriate that that ended up being the children's sermon, because it's, it's uh, sometimes to just follow is it, to be peaceful, okay? may have heard that old saying of uh, lead, follow, or get out of the way uh, kind of thing, but uh, sometimes following is, is peaceful. And sometimes a lot of leadership comes from the back. You may not realize that, but if you've ever driven cattle, you don't lead cattle anywhere. You have to be on the back <laughs> to get the cattle to move. Okay? Sheep and some other animals, you can kind of lead. You can get one going, you can get the rest going, but cattle have to be done from the back. So the scriptures this morning are from the book of Numbers and then from uh, John. So John, Numbers 11, 4 through 5. The rabble with them began to crave other food. So even the Israelites being out in the wilderness, I like the way it says the rabble with them. There was even people of, of, of the chosen people that were rabble. Okay? So nobody ever said everybody was good. Okay? The rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we could have, we had meat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost, while the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we've lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. Okay? So God has been providing manna every single day for them to eat. And all they have to do is go out and pick it up and eat. Okay? And it's not good. They don't like it. And I'm afraid we'd be just like them. Okay? John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, the Father, except through me. And if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I'm going to start today talking about some stereotypes. <laughs> stereotypes can be very hurtful things. Okay? Uh... Not always, but sometimes they're, they're hurtful. Now, the first stereotype I have been thinking of lately is his grandmother. The stereotypical grandma was the little old lady with white hair pulled up on top of her head with the apron on and the dress in the kitchen. Okay? She cooks a lot. She crochets. She sews clothes. She likes to sit in a rocking chair on the front porch and shell holly beans. You know, that's what the, 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 the Norman Rockwell picture of... of the great, uh, the, the grandmother, okay? Now let's think of the stereotypical college football player, or professional football player, okay? Big, maybe a little vicious, maybe a little arrogant, and often associated with not being the brightest of all the marquee. We usually think they're, they're not real smart, okay? Then there's also the absent-minded professor, that we're familiar with. So I'm just trying to throw some out there that you know. Piles of papers everywhere. Can't find anything. Super intelligent, but maybe not real smart. All right. uh, don't know whether they're coming or going sometimes. Uh, there's an old story about a, a teacher at SEMO who, uh, I won't say her name, but uh, I'm pretty sure I know some people who are in class who, who came running in one morning and threw off her coat and started teaching and she was standing there in her slip. She forgot to put her dress on. <laughs> Uh, that was the absent-minded professor. That was, uh, I, I think it was a true story, you know? Uh, stereotypes endure, though, because sometimes there's a little grain of truth in them, okay? But, but let's think of some of the opposites, okay? Or, or too often, sometimes our thoughts and our actual ones actually reveal more about us than what we want to say. So if we look at the typical grandmother now, which is what kind of made me think about this, Grandmas don't look like that anymore. Okay? Now, if you've anybody's ever seen Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving special, <laughs> Charles Schultz pointed this out way back in the, the like 69, 1969. Because at the very end, they're riding into the station wagon, singing over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house to go, and Charlie Brown stops and says, But my grandmother lives in a condominium. <laughs> okay? So now, you know, grandma let me live in a condom. Grandma may have said to heck with you and retired to Florida. Okay? Grandma may ride a Harley. Okay? <laughs> Grandmas may prefer, instead of cooking the whole big Thanksgiving meal, they may just say, we're going to the restaurant, I'm writing a check. 
<laughs> they just don't want to do it. The grandmas have changed. Professional football players. You know, we may think they're big and dumb, but you know what? A lot of them had to graduate college, and a lot of them, if you look at their, their statistics and stuff, they had very good college. They, 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 you can't get there without having some degree of intelligence. You just can't. Okay? You get the point. <clears throat> that stereotypes can be kind of a, a, a bad thing, but they're usually rooted in something true somehow. Now, there's also something called the Oz Effect. I don't know if anybody's ever understood, heard of the Oz Effect. But it's a fascinating little, little theory. And it's that the wizard did not give Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin man, or the cowardly lion anything that they did not already have. You think about that movie. He didn't give them anything that they did not already possess. Right? They possessed everything they needed. <clears throat> but in, in following the advice of the wizard, they found that they had the qualities they most desired. Dorothy saw herself as this little meek person and she wanted to be more brave, but when the wizard told her she had to go do these things, she found that she was brave. <laughs> and the same for the tin man and the, the cowardly lion and so forth. The problem with Dorothy and friends was that their troubles became their own snares. Okay? And so it goes with us. Our troubles become our own snares, our own traps. Think about what troubled you the most last week. I'm just going to pause for a second. Just, you don't have to say it out loud. Just think about what maybe troubled you the most last week. Now, did any of the troubles you had last week carry any whiff of eternity with them? Or do they all smell of this world? All the things we heard on the news and all that, but does it carry any whiff of eternity? What's going to happen to us in our immortal lives? Or is it all just of this world? Well, like Dorothy and her friends, our emotions can provide clues about what is really most important in our lives. If we pursue our desires and struggle without being God, or without putting God into our situation, we create fogs that cloud our paths, that keep us from seeing the heavens. And you know what? If that happens, it becomes hard to see the path. And if it's hard to see the path, it's easy to quit or to fall off the path completely. Or as the old saying goes, that wagon, I didn't fall off the wagon, the wagon ran over me. Okay? But it's easy when we let our own desires and our own worries and things get in our way. Do they smell of this world? Are they whiff of eternity there? Peace with God means that we go where Christ leads us. But we need to allow God to use the difficulties that we go through to advance his plans. Because believe it or not, the difficulties we go through advance God's plans. Sometimes a sickness can lead to a deeper faith and greater empathy for others. I'm going to use Sherry's family as an example for a minute. She was in, on hospice the last few days. And I told some of the family, and I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced sometimes that people have to go through that so that when the time comes, the family is ready to say, it was for the best. <clears throat> the family has to see the person go through that for them to be able to willing to say goodbye. <clears throat> it's a tough thing, but... I, I'm thoroughly convinced that is part of the reason. A difficult person to lead, if you have a child that's a little bit obstinate, <clears throat> I'm not looking at you, Nick, your mom is. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a child, or if you're working with children, or if you're a leader of people in your work, and you have someone there that's a little bit obstinate, they can make things very difficult, and it can make you very difficult to be patient with them, okay? Anybody ever just walk outside and like, and, okay, now I can go back in, okay? We just have to do that sometimes. No opportunities, whether they're bad or good, is wasted in our lives. All the opportunities we have, whether they're bad or good, help us to deepen our faith. 
and help us to find peace with those situations. Because after we've went through one of those situations, the next time we know how to, we know better how to deal with that situation. Okay? Especially when you teach and little Johnny's driving you crazy and you realize it's just September and you got little Johnny till May. <laughs> you're gonna have to figure out some little Johnny's not gonna get transferred out of your class. You gotta figure out how to work with little Johnny. It teaches you how to do things. The mistake comes from pursuing or resisting desires and difficulties without seeking God's guidance. Without saying, God, where do you want us to go? How do you want us to do this? Okay? If we want to experience peace, we have to realize that a Christian life is not a set path that never changes. I'll say that again. If we want peace, we're going to have to realize that a Christian life is not a set path that never changes. Because all too often, if you listen to some of the people on TV and some of the big evangelists and so forth, they basically make it sound like that once you're born again, life's going to be easy. And a lot of people get disenchanted with the church and with religion because they get baptized and they're saved, and three or four weeks later, things aren't quite as rosy because life has crept back in. But you've got to realize that unless you keep bringing Jesus into your life, <clears throat> it's not going to be a straight path. And even with Jesus in your life, it's not going to be a straight path because he does allow difficult things to happen to good people. Christian life is not simply agreeing to a set of beliefs and then going on about your business. And that's what a lot of people want. Look, I got my certificate. I'm a Christian. You know, that, that they really, that, that, that's, here's my card. <laughs> That's not the way it works, though. If we insist on leading rather than following, we'll never enjoy the wholeness, safety, healing, or whatever God has in store for us. If we insist on leading rather than following, we will never enjoy what God has in store for us. Because we'll miss it. <laughs> Be careful when you insist on being in charge of your life. You might just get what you want. You've ever thought about those unanswered prayers? And then looked back later on and thought, hmm, maybe I was better off without that. John 14, 6, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What does it mean to follow God? We may be asked to do things that we have never thought we would do. Just like Dorothy and the her friends. They were asked to do things they never thought they'd be, they'd do, but they did. And it may be an adventure, just like them. Some of us are afraid of what God might ask. There are people who don't want to become Christians because they're a little bit deep down inside afraid that they may be asked to do something. I've often said that it takes, and you've heard it, that it takes... A little bit more belong to a small church than a really big church. Because in a small church, you miss about five Sundays, three or four Sundays, somebody's going to be asking about you. In a large church, somebody may not miss you. May they just may assume you're at a different, oh, they must be going to the five o'clock service or whatever. They don't. The small church, we notice. You may get asked to do something. We grow comfortable far too often with where we are. Numbers 11, 4, 5 through, or 4, uh, the rabble with them began to crave other food. And again the Israelites started wailing and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Now keep in mind that they were slaves, but fish was of no cost to them because the Nile River was there and they, they really couldn't keep them from going out and, and catching fish. Okay? Uh, we didn't have anything. They, they also have cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic, which sounds quite a, like a wonderful salad. But, uh, but now we've lost our appetite because all we have is this manna. Just this manna. Now, I'm not going to say school food is great, okay? But my mom was a school cook for many years, and she had a basic theory, and I think she's right. Sometimes it's not that the school food was so bad, it's just you got tired of eating the same thing. 
because they got into government commodities and had to use them, and so there's only so many ways to use chicken patties, and so it wasn't that the chicken patties themselves were so bad the first couple times, it was the 29th time, <laughs> but there, that's the way the government works and sends out, so you just got tired of eating it, okay? Uh, Pam has a cousin who ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every single day of his life for lunch at school. I don't think I could do that. Throw in a little bologna or some ham or something <laughs> once a while. I don't know if I could do that every single day. But we soon forget how good we've got it, just like the Israelites. There's manna laying all over the place. All I gotta do is walk out there, pick it up, and eat it. But they got tired of it. I don't want manna anymore. We had it last night. I don't want leftovers. You know, we had that once. You know? And I don't know about how many of you that do the same thing with you when you box up all the put your little leftovers in your little containers and all that kind of stuff, and two weeks later you throw the moldy leftovers in the, you know, it's just, you, you know. I saw a meme from a friend of mine who was, said, I've got to buy my mandatory bag of lettuce so I can throw the, uh, the, the rotten, wilting lettuce away two weeks from now. You know, it's just, that's, we get set in our ways. Many of us, like the Israelites, have faltered on our journeys. Our prayers have went unanswered. Fellow travelers have heard us we didn't get what we wanted. And because of that, we may eat a little more, we may drink a little more. We sin much more easily because when you're not getting what you want, it's a lot easier just to kind of do what you want. <clears throat> Before we know it, we've not only faltered on our journey, but we're in full retreat. <clears throat> we're not even moving forward anymore. But if we analyze the situation closely, it may be because we have quit letting God lead. We quit letting God lead. We were trying to lead. It may be that we're in the situation we're in because we want to lead instead of follow. Following God is just that. It's follow. The more we follow, the more we learn to live in the Spirit. The more we follow, the more we learn about peace. The more we follow, the more opportunities that we have had. I'm going to tell you a story real quick about a man named William Bisler, who lived in the early 19th century in a big, large city in Europe. And one day, he was an industrial worker. One day, he heard God clearly say to him that he should stand at an open window at work for his lunch hour. He should stand at the open window and read the Bible every day during lunch. Read it out loud every day. He heard God say that distinctly to him. So guess what? He did it. He did it for about a month, and he saw no point. So he quit. <clears throat> Just like we would. We didn't see any point in it. Just a short while later, he ran into his pastor. <clears throat> And his pastor told him of the situation. He asked the pastor where he was, and he said he had been conducting a funeral. And he asked him about some things, and the, asked him about the funeral, and the pastor said, or the, the, the William Bisler said, I've been standing at this window because God told me to stand there and read out loud from the Bible every single day. And the pastor looked at him and he said, How strange. Because the funeral I just was attending or taking or officiating was a member of the parish that had tuberculosis and was bedridden. And she described the miracle of hearing the Bible read aloud through her open window each day at noon. She died yesterday believing God was speaking to her. Such a sweet story. God speaks in many, many ways. One of the slogans of the United Church of Christ is God is still speaking. He speaks in many, many ways. That man had no idea why he was standing there reading in the Bible, but there was a plan. There was a purpose. Because some elderly, bedridden person thought God was talking to them. God gives each of us opportunities to follow, but he doesn't force us to take hold of them. That's up to us. And the question to you is, will we ever learn to follow? Join me for the last song, the family prayer song.
that it's there in two verses. spirit and the wind. It goes wherever it wills, wherever we send it, through webs and nets and wires, Googles and Zooms, to everyone whose heart needs peace, and to every place where there is no peace. And we will share it now. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen.